twelve thirty. Welcome to Roscommon County Board of Commissioners special meeting, November 27, 2023. Uh, on this right here, we're going to, well, when we come up to approve the agenda. Mark, you want to lead us in the pledge? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Michelle, roll call, board members, please. Spencer. Here. Milburn. Here. Wolfson. Here. Ostergren. Here. Russo. Here. Okay, approval of the agenda. We're going to add, <clears throat> we need some motions. So that would be number, we'll just write it in there, new business. Uh, we have A and B, and then number seven will be motions. Eight will be public comment, and nine will be adjournment. I correct the show. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make that motion to approve it with the changes. I'll so, second. Any discussion? Hey, Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm not in favor of this meeting. Okay. I'm going to vote no. And the reason being is that I have some comments to make. I we don't have everything typed up, but I do today. The entire board should be aware that the delegated authority, controller Julie Valentino, issued the directions to replace the steel plates. After permission, it was replaced from Eagle on or about May 30th, 2023. From my non lawyer perspective, this makes the action non criminal, in my opinion. At the beginning of the term, Eric made some ver verified verbal threats to the commissioner, uh, Chairman Russo, promising him to make his life a well, we don't have to get into it and force him out of office. I believe now that Eric is potentially planning to bring forth a challenge of incompatibility to offices, that, that, that our chairman, David Russo, is the Markey Township Fire Chief and his position as county commissioner. I believe this is an attempt to embarrass our chairman and marginalize Eric's criminal case. Those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, I didn't, Mr. Chair, I didn't understand the first part of your comments. Mark, would you repeat those again? Sure. The entire, the entire board should be aware that the delegated authority, which is controlled of Jody Valentino, issued the director. Delegated of authority of what? The lakes. When? At what point in time? December of last year. Actually, she was in charge of them uh, of Holden Lake in, uh, since March 20, I think it's March 2nd or March 22 okay. of uh, 2022. I'm fine with that. I have a problem with that. That, she, that you were issued a direction to replace the steel plates. Asked for permission was received from Eagle on or about May 30th. And from my non lawyer perspective, because obviously I'm not aware, I believe this this makes it non criminal. With that being said, Mr. Chair, this is kind of an unusual meeting. But I asked Controller Jody Valentino if she feels, feels forthright to be able to elaborate on my comments. No pressure from this direction. Sure. Um, I've actually spoken to, well, at least two of these commissioners um, provided communications to the current now Holton Lake delegated authority as well um, in regards to specifically the steel plates, which um, obviously were no surprise to anybody since they've been discussed at meetings. We all received email complaints that they weren't in soon enough um, during the summertime. But what I have for you is the email that went out on Tuesday, May 30th of 2023 um, that I sent to Bill Sullivan in which I copied um, Julie Nordkast, who's the secretary, and keeps everything up to date on the website so that that way everything's nice and transparent. Um, and additionally, I copied David Russo, who is our chairperson, and Doug Shy, who is an additional maintenance person. And it says, good morning, Bill. We need to do the following for Holton Lake, lake level control structure. 
close Holton Lake's existing open boards and gates immediately. Receive verification from Gaylord Eagle office to replace steel plates as the permit expired and schedule pour out to replace the steel plates. Please and thank you. So it was my directive that the steel plates go back in. I have some comments I'd like to make now. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if that is, if, yeah. What is, what is the motion? We kind of got off track, it looks like. Kind of. So can we go ahead and do the vote? And I mean, this seems to be all falling <clears throat> under A for new business. So let's get there, maybe. Thank you. Please, thank you. There's a motion in the second, and I was at discussion. Michelle Colro. What is the motion? That, that's the thing. To accept the, approve the agenda. agenda. Okay. And, and I'm going to say no, because I don't think this meeting needs to transpire. That's why I think it's fair. I appreciate Michelle's comments because this is kind of convoluted. I'm going to shoot it from the hip here, but I don't think this meeting should be here, so I'm going to vote no. This email changes nothing. Okay, it does to me. Okay. Uh, Michelle, call for a vote, please. Ostergren. Yes. Milburn. No. Spencer. Yes. Wolfson. Yes. Russo. Yes. Motion carried. Now we're at public comment. Public comment first. <laughs> there any public comment out there. Okay. New business. Now we continue. Eric, you want to start yes. off? Yes. Uh, Same. Just let me hand out information. This is a copy of the statute. Oops, there's two over there. I'm going to address this in just a little bit as part of my comments. And I don't know if you This meeting, from what I understand, we passed a motion the other day to have someone contact the Michigan State Police and who should be the person to contact or persons to contact the Michigan State Police. We've got a real problem here regarding the installation of the 5,000 pound 5 by 19 foot steel plate in the Houghton Lake level control structure. Earlier this month, this month, one of our commissioners was convicted of violating MCL 302.30720, which states... Didn't you just... Say all this in your last meeting. Mr. Root, no, I did not go over this in the last meeting. Okay. Chair, Sounds like it. Comments without interruption, please. A person who is not authorized by a delegated authority or department to operate a dam or other normal level control uh, facility and who changes or causes to change the level of an inland lake, the normal level of which has been established under this part or any previous act governing lake levels, and for one which the delegated authority or the department has taken steps to maintain the normal level is guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by a fine of not more than $1,000 or imprisonment for not more than one year or both. And shall be required to pay the actual cost of restoration or replacement of the dam and any other property, including any natural resource that is damaged or destroyed as a result of the violation. That's the end of the statute. Clearly. The installation of the steel plate on Houghton Lake has changed its level and to a much greater degree. To make matters worse, I recently learned that the steel plate was reinstalled during the month of June 2023, way after the permit had expired, and it's been there for at least five months, not just three days, and the steel plate is 40 times the size of the 6 inch by 4.75 foot dinky little stop log that was installed on the Higgins Lake Dam. Here. Not only is the person who committed this crime guilty of that offense, they are also guilty of violating the statute I just handed out, MCL 234315.25. And you know what? I'm going to have to borrow that from you. Yeah, Mark, so I can read that one right there. Yeah, I got to get two pins to work and they have one work. Here. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> 
Natural Resources Environmental Protection Act, 241-1994, commencement of civil action, request, place, civil fine, contempt, will for a reckless violation of, as misdemeanor, penalty, subsequent violations, fine for failure to obtain permit, restoration of site, schedule of administrative monetary penalties for minor uh, violations. I'm just gonna read number three. In addition to any other relief granted under this section, this is different than the other statute. In addition to any other relief granted under this section, the court may impose a civil fine of not more than $10,000 for each day of violation of this part, a rule promulgated under this part or a permit issued under this part. Or a person found guilty of contempt of court for the violation of an order of the court shall be subject to a civil fine not to exceed $10,000 for each day of the violation. A person who willfully or recklessly violates this part or rule promulgated under this part, an order issued by the department or a condition in a permit issued under this part, which violation places or may place a person in imminent danger of death, serious bodily harm, or may cause serious property damage or serious damage to natural resources or a person who has knowledge or is responsible for such a violation is guilty of a misdemeanor, punishable by imprisonment for not more than one year and a fine of not less than $2,500 or more than $25,000 for each violation or both. Six, a person required to obtain a permit or activity regulated under this part who does not obtain that permit shall be fined not less than twice the fee charged for the appropriate permit application. A possible $10,000 a fine a day is a lot of money that the, cows could, that the county could, fa could face in fines. We need the steel plate taken out as soon as possible to avoid the possibility of those kinds of fines. I would suggest that we entertain a motion in this meeting to have that steel plate removed immediately. The commission is at a crossroads. Crimes were committed when, ma when a massive steel plate was installed on Houghton Lake. If one of our very own commissioners did so and kept the other commissioners, uh, kept it from the other commissioners, there's a problem. I've had a few of my constituents email me this weekend and tell me that the steel plate was not there on Memorial Day, and then it appeared on the 4th of July this past summer. So now we know the approximate time it was installed. If more than one person knew about the steel plate or participated in the installation of it or found out about it afterwards and allowed it to continue without notifying the other commissioners or other authorities, it's a conspiracy. We've all heard about the cover-up being greater than the original crime itself, and it's true in this case as well. A conspiracy to commit a crime is a misdemeanor under statute MCL 750.157A and violating the statute can actually have greater consequences than the original crime that was committed. MCL 750.157, conspiracy to commit an offense. This is the statute. In an illegal manner in the penalty. Section 157A, a person who conspires together with one or more persons to commit an offense prohibited by law or to commit a legal act in an illegal manner is guilty of the crime of conspiracy, punishable as provided herein, except as provided in paragraphs B, C, and D. The commission of the offense prohibited by law is punishable by imprisonment for one year or more. That person convicted under this section shall be punished by a penalty equal to that which could be imposed if he had been convicted of committing the crime he conspired to commit and in the discretion of the court, an additional penalty fine of $10,000 may be imposed. If the commission of the offense prohibited by law is punishable by imprisonment for less than one year, except in par provided in paragraph B, the person convicted under this section shall be imprisoned for not more than one year, nor fine more than $1,000 or both such fine and imprisonment. That's the end of the statute. Anyone who committed these criminal acts of installing the steel plate in the Holden Lake Dam could have violated several statutes, including conspiracy. Those who knew about this criminal act could have also be prosecuted for not reporting it when, and they would be guilty of conspiracy as well. If anyone used their position of authority and ordered subordinates to commit a criminal act or ask subordinates to cover up criminal acts, they would be guilty of workplace coercion, which is also a crime. Additionally, when the investigation occurs, covering it up and not telling the police that crimes took place is obstruction of justice. Lying to police is also a crime, MCL 750.411, a misdemeanor punishable by a year in jail and a $1,000 fine. 
this shouldn't be a normal way of doing business in Ross Common. In this case, we know the crimes were committed. Steel plate was there and no one can deny that. An investigation concerning how many crimes were committed is the question. Today, we are going to discuss who's going to take this information to the Michigan State Police. Since I have a lot of information, I would suggest that myself and another member of the Board of Commissioners, namely Commissioner Wilson, do that. And during the motion time, I will move to do so. Thank you. You're saying you never knew about the steel plate being in? Not during an illegal time, Mr. Russo. And this is not the time to go over that. We can go over that in court when you're sitting in front of the jury. Okay. Glad everything, our meetings are on tape. Okay. Can you make a comment, sir? Yes. First of all, you don't really know a crime's been committed. That's correct. Um, we haven't had much information on the subject come to the board. Perhaps with more information coming to the board, we could better direct our efforts. A police investigation would only be done to determine if a crime has been committed. We are not the ones to determine that. You're absolutely right. It would be nice if everybody could sit down and share all information on this subject, not have to go that route. That's my comment. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. The controller never had a chance to elaborate, but I would like to make a comment about it. First of all, there ain't no conspiracy. We're not that smart, okay? There's no cover up. <coughs> that there's conspiracy infers that there is a conspiracy, maybe not as articulate as I would like to, to uh, announce because I know we have our legal folks back there. The bottom line is we ain't that smart. And I know that's bad English. There's no cover up. And, we, and I haven't had a chance for the controller at her leisure to be able to elaborate on my comments. If you would incline, Mr. Chair, to have uh, Madam Controller elaborate on the comments that I made earlier. You would like to speak, Jody, it's up to you. I, Asking you to do so. Yeah, I don't really, um, I don't really know what to say. Um, it's this very interesting position and um, I, I, I understand Commissioner Ostergan's concerns. Um, my thought would be that certainly the uh, installation of the steel plates was brought up in several of our meetings. So it was not a secret to this board of commissioners. As a matter of fact, several commissioners received emails or were copied on emails from constituents who were angry that they were not placed in earlier in the years. Um, and certainly if anyone asks for that copy, I would be more than happy to provide it just as I provided you this email today. Uh, I'm not sure why you think there's a conspiracy. Um, it's really hard to cover up steel plates. Um, especially when you have a Houghton Lake Community Facebook page, post that publicizes those and comments on a weekly basis on all of the lake levels. Um, I, I'm also concerned because you, you did read from one of the statutes um, in regards to, I believe it was the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act Act 451, um, where it talks about variations of a person required to obtain a permit for activity regulated under this part who does not, not obtain that permit shall be fined not less than twice the fee charge for the appropriate permit application. Um, if you were to do this correctly and go through personnel and handle this in the manner that is so set up through statute, um, information might be able to be shared. Um, but instead, here, here we are. Yep. We're, we're dramatic again. Um, I would also like to point out that the one statute says a person who is not authorized by a delegated authority. So in looking on my behalf and my action, clearly I was the delegated authority. Commissioner, mm -hmm. Commissioner Ostrigan did point that out. Um, and I do agree with Commissioner Ostrigan that um, you became aware last week that there is clearly in a public meeting, there is no permit. So you do have to take um, immediate action in regards to the steel plate. That is one thing we definitely agree on. Um, 
Thank you, Jody. The only problem with the discussions of the steel plate that have taken place over the last year or so, everyone was under the assumption that an Eagle permit was there and in place. That is not the case. It was never sought. And I understand that, sir. Well, that that's the problem. There's no Eagle permit there. And I, again, there's more information if you did this the correct way by going through personnel and holding investigations for policies, um, per various public employment acts um, that require you to provide some pretty specific information to keep yourselves from being sued as the boards of commissioners. Um, this information could be provided to you, but certainly not in the way that you're trying to go about it in order to retaliate against people for what you feel is some conspiracy to put you up on charges, sir. It, it is I'm not trying to retaliate blindly, against anybody. It is blindly and clear to most people because the steel plates have been in effect forever. And we were all under the impression, at least I was, that Eagle had a permit. We I was not aware that they were not permitted until we received the information from Shepke Consulting that there is no permit in place. There hasn't been since... Uh, September of 2022. Uh, that is a problem. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who everybody knew and everything. So, is Commissioner all, Osterden, no, let no, me ask you a question. Finish. Please let no, me finish. Sir, no, no, let me finish. No. I have the floor. She has the floor. Therefore, when I was placed as delegated authority, what training did this board provide to me? What compensation did this board provide to me? When I went to each commissioner individually numerous times and begged to be removed because of the overload of work and the position that you have placed me in, you have placed me in, how many motions came forward? How many times did you motion to remove me as delegated authority? None. So therefore, most of this blame may fall on me for failure to renew a permit. I'll take it. You know what? I quit as Holton Lake Delegated Authority. Oh, wait. I did that already. That's right. I have also spoken to Eagle on my own to discuss the fact of the permit and the verbal authorization that was received by our Buildings and Grounds Department for this permit. But here we are, sir. May I speak now? I never authorized you to be delegated authority. I was not a member of this board when you were authorized to be delegated authority. It was a past previous board that authorized you to be delegated authority. Okay. And. Okay, let's move on. Mr. Chair, can I have a comment, please? Real quick. Um, in all this, I think threatening people with fines and I'm not threatening, I'm just stating the law. Well, I understand that. But I think it's counterproductive to figuring out what went on here. I really think the board should make more effort in trying to figure if there's criminal charges need to be filed or not before we move forward. I agree. It's not up to us, Mr. Wilson. You agree too? We we also okay. need to take Okay, we're going to move on now. Discussion over. Uh, remove the plates from Home Lake LLC. Do we need a formal motion on this, Michelle, or can we agree to it? Okay. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give five minute recess while two motions are drafted to remove the plates from the home link LCC in a motion if we need to direct a board member to contact the Michigan State. Have a comment on that? Please. Yes. Um, we have a delegated authority on Houghton Lake. Seems to be very good. He's already been talking with Eagle about mm -hmm. this. Um, I think we just need to turn it over to him and let him work with Eagle and how to proceed from here and get it in writing from Eagle. Okay. That's my opinion. I mean, it's... I would agree with that. 
I would agree with that too. Okay, can we draft that up as a motion, Michelle? So, so you want two different motions? Yes. Both of them are directing the current Fulton Lake delegated authority. One to remove the steel plates for Houghton Lake, and the other is to, is he contacting MSP or is he working with well, Eagle to determine? I have a motion for that draft drawn up. One second. Well, uh, the second motion, if we should contact the Michigan State Police, yes or no? Would that be fair? We already passed that motion last week. What's that? Okay, we just won't make a motion. I have a, I have a motion I'd like to bring forth. My motion is to delegate Commissioner Rex Wolfson and Commissioner Eric Ostergren contact the Michigan State Police and report the steel plate that's installed on Houghton and provide the Michigan State No, State I Police. like Rex's motion better. Mr. Mr. Russo, I'm not done reading my, my motion. Oh, okay, but I'm just telling you. Motion to delegate Commissioner Rex Wilson and Commissioner Eric Ostergren to contact the Michigan State Police and report the steel plate that is installed on Houghton and provide the Michigan State Police with all the information they know about its installation, ask them to investigate who installed it and report back to the commission, and then notify a prosecutor to prosecute, the, prosecute those who violated the requisite statutes. Okay, I'm not in favor of that motion. I like Rex's better. What's... Yeah. I think you should be able to move with, with Eric's comment. I think he has a valid comment. Just because he puts it forward doesn't mean we have to agree with it, but I think he has a valid comment at least to put it on the, on the slate. Then we can vote no. Again, I'm not determining how the outcome is going. Right. To I think well, that's a, my feelings. You have, an, you have a responsibility. Give that to the clerk. Thank you. And give that to the clerk, and uh, we'll take a five-minute recess. Is that long enough for you, Michelle? Minutes, Mr. Chair. Ten minutes. Let's see, motion number one. Would you like to read that, Michelle, please? I would love to. Thank you. Move to direct Houghton Lake Delegated Authority Chase Shefke to work with Eagle regarding the removal of the steel plate from the Houghton Lake Lake Level Control Structure. So move. Any discussion? Clerk, can you please call roll? Oh, yes, Mark. Yeah, who's going to direct? It would be, we could, Rex and Darlene, because they're taking care of that right now. We Right now to remove. Okay, well... The delegated authorities to work with Eagle on right. So what happens if you work with Eagle and Eagle says then they, they stay in? <coughs> What's that, Mark? Well, regarding the removal per Eagle, we could just put per Eagle in there. Well, it's just saying, it's just simply stating regarding the removal. It's not saying whether it's going to be removed or not. It's just simply yeah, just regarding. regarding the removal. So then yep. that way. And, and then I guess Darlene and I will talk to Chase on that subject if that's. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clerk, call roll, please. Answer. Yes. Milburn. Yes. Ostergren. Yes. Wolfson. Yes. Russo. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, motion number two, Michelle. Move to delegate Commissioner Rex Wolfson and Commissioner Commissioner Eric Ostergren to contact the Michigan State Police to request an investigation be conducted into the placement of a steel plate on the Houghton Lake Lake Level Control Structure without a valid permit. I move. Is there a second? With no second, that motion is dropped okay uh public comment during public comment with that being said number nine adjournment we'll move this chair second all in favor aye, aye. okay let's give it 10 minutes and we'll go in our second meeting
November 27, 2023. Thinking how I want to do this. Um, first, we'll do the pledge. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Madam Clerk. Wolfson. Here. Ostergren. Here. Milburn. Here. Spencer. Here. Russo. Here. Approval of the agenda. Uh, before we get to that, this being a special meeting and we have it posted, can Rebecca actually talk on some paperwork that she has or? I, I don't believe so. Okay. Okay, yeah. we'll have to do it at regular. Topic going in was special meeting for. Yeah. She can talk during public comment. Okay. I can bring you up for that, Rebecca. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. No, oh. no, 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 no. We are. We have to approve the agenda. However, we need to make the same. Or we need to make the same change to the agenda that we made in the. Oh, previous okay. Where we're number, sure. number seven will be motions and resolutions. Number eight will be public comment. Number nine will be adjourned. Okay. So now you need a motion and a second. And I'll second that discussion. Okay. Clerk call roll, please. Answer. Yes. Wolfson. Yes. Ostergren. Yes. Russo? Yes. Melbourne. Okay. Uh, Ms. Sensor, would you like to kick this off? Public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. You have to turn your mic on and identify yourself, please. Rebecca Reagan, Ross County County Treasurer. Um, I wasn't planning on talking today. Um, I think all of you, except for Eric, I think just today I got a chance to talk to him. I talked to everybody else on Wednesday about my fund balance plan. Okay. And um, when I explained it to Mark, he asked me to write up some motions, which I think most of you I have shown those motions to. So um, the fund balance plan basically would take 15% what equals the 15% fund balance and invest that in MBIA um, right now making 5.12% interest, which then uh, your 15% would grow very quickly to the 18% that Darlene, or excuse me, um, Commissioner Sensor talked about having the fund balance reach. So I would appreciate um, at your next meeting that you would be able to consider Number one, the fund balance plan. Number two, the motions that I have written up. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment out there? Number six, new business. Ms. Sensor. So after talking with... Um, some other commissioners and with under sheriff and sheriff and our controller and some of the other um, employees. I'd like to entertain possibly um, a millage and maybe it be for the Ross Common County public safety millage. What that would include would be um, Ross County. Russ Common County seasonal patrols, sting, jail operations, and programs, security, safety, security upgrades within the Russ Common County buildings and emergency management. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time to get that going and get our foot on the ground for February, but I still think it's really important for us to at least try to attempt. If the millage were to pass, obviously it would be earmarked for these programs and these programs only. And basically we would have to decide on what type of mill 
that we would want to be asking for. Um, what do you have right now? Here. I have it anywhere from 2.5 all the way down to 1.5. Looking at, and I know we haven't finalized the budget, but looking at numbers that our controller has provided with us with the budgets and things like that, I think that we should be looking at at least 1.75, if not two. I would go along with the two after discussion with you. I don't know what the rest of the board's feelings are. An estimated would bring us three million two hundred and eighty-four thousand four hundred and sixty dollars and twenty cents. Turn your mic on and identify yourself, please. Under Sheriff Ben Lowe. Thank you. So what is your specific question? How do you feel you feel comfortable with that amount of money and we spend it the way that we need to? And the kicker is, is that would it last long enough, in your opinion, would it last long enough to do the job that we need? I guess that depends on what decisions you guys make as a board. Uh, what we have discussed is a 10-year millage at that level. Mm -hmm. Um, when you look at the things within the county budget that take up a large portion of our budget, the jail is one of those things. It's um, mandated that we uh, provide for care and custody of inmates. It's one of those things that you can't really get around. And uh, it's one of those things that's very costly to do. When you add that in with all the other <coughs> services that uh, Mr. Sensor was uh, reading in her motion there. I, I think it's going to, to take a significant amount of money to cover all of those services. I don't know what the community will be open to. I, in my opinion, from talking with people throughout the community over the last several years, trying to pass a Headley rollback, I think that they would be more in favor of a millage for these kinds of services than just a blanket Headley Here's the money and take it and do what you want. I believe targeted millages are much better too. So you, you feel comfortable with the two, the two, or should we go one seven five, two point two five? What do you feel? I, I think two is, is a good figure. I don't know whether two will be successful. I think two will give us the money that we need to operate. I think all we can do is ask. Ultimately it's up to the public to decide whether sure. it's something they want to do. Based on that, I would feel comfortable with two two. Yeah, and talking with Darlene, I I like the idea of splitting it out so people and not being able to take any excess or shortage and spend that in other areas of the general budget. People like that idea. I, I at least I do. Uh, I think a lot better uh, because they know it's going to go for those particular services and not going to be spent elsewhere. And any overages or anything that any excess is not going to be thrown back into the general budget. It's going to be defined to just that specific thing. So then the following years, if we have excess, uh, then the millages could actually be rolled back. So I'm, I'm in favor of, of, uh, of cutting that out. In fact, I think a lot more of our government should be uh, uh, managed and budgeted that way. I really like the idea when Darlene came to me with it and it spells it out. And like you mentioned, it's just not a blanket and for everything. And like Eric said, it spells everything out. And much of her conversation with me was, like Eric was saying, uh, you guys will have to be the ones to manage that, this board or future boards, as far as we can ask for it too. But if that's not needed, you guys are the ones that are going to have to make those decisions of what is needed year after year. Correct. You got my support. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk. When does this language have to be approved to be on the ballot? It has to be filed with the clerk's office December 5th by 4 o'clock p.m. When's our next meeting? After that. After that. Okay, so we want to make the motion today. Uh, do you have the language for that motion? Not the language for the actual there, motion. Are you okay. done discussion on this? No. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's, too, it's, too, 
The fifth is Tuesday. Um, am I correct in that we do two mills and we find we don't need two mills, we can cut that levy back mm -hmm. year to correct. year? Is that correct? correct? Yep. Um, Are, I have a question. Are we going to reduce the other millage? Is that going to be 2% off of our general millage, or is this just going to be an addition to? Because I, I can see the people saying, hey, this is just another way to take it out of the general budget, separate it, which is fine. But are we going to be reducing it, or is this just going to be another tack on 2%? Right now, it'll be a tack on 2%. And that's because you already approved the millage collection for the general. That was already that was already done when you approved the L four zero two nine in the fall that mm -hmm. um, equalization director Hauserman presents to you. So we're going to take this out of the budget, and we're not going to do anything to take anything off of the regular. I can see people saying it's just a counting trick. That's what I see. And uh, while I'm a, while I agree with the the concept, uh, it shouldn't be an accounting trick. I don't see it as a counting trick. No. I, I see that that for the people. Well, well, we're getting in trouble. Well, with I understand. Well, what is our current millage in the, for the general budget? Four point. I don't know what off the top of my head, and I'm sorry, but it's um, I want to say four point eight one six three. Of which currently our that's the emergency entirety. services is covered inside that amount. <sighs> Um, with the exception of those that we no longer have anymore under seasonal patrol, um, a portion, the only seasonal patrol that we still have is Marine Patrol, and that actually comes out of the 207, that actually comes out of the sheriff. Um, portions of security come out of sheriff, obviously. Um, but yes, so for the most part, I would say 80%. Yes. Well, so what we're doing is we're taking out of one pocket, okay, and creating another pocket that we're going to put 2% in, and the, this pocket's going to stay the same. Correct. To do the that's an accounting stuff we need. Well, yes and no, trick. because these are areas that if our if we don't have money, these are areas that are gonna have to be cut sooner or later. Mm -hmm. So it's really not an accounting trick. It is if we don't get money for these things and the general fund isn't where it needs to be. Right. Hey, I, I it's not an accounting trick. I, I hear Eric's concerns. They offer some validity. What are you suggesting? This if we're going to take, if we're going to take emergency services out of the general budget, okay, and not reduce the general budget millage at all, and we're just going to tack on another two percent, it's just like a two percent tack on. And in other words, if we're going to take some out of of one. We're going to take some of the expense out of one. We got to shift that expense to the emergency so service. We don't need to collect that full amount on the other end of it. We don't have to. Well, uh, but but you still all of a sudden we might need a roof. We might need that money, or uh, the parking lot, or electrical or plumbing in this building. Well, well. Maybe the people out here don't understand, but I, I understand totally. We're, we're just adding on another 2% and it's going to be dedicated, which, which I think is good. Right. It's going to be dedicated. So we should reduce the other millage by a certain percentage, maybe not the full 2%, maybe uh, 1%. I, I mean, because it, all you're doing is you're shuffling the cards on the deck. We, we have the authority to do that every year. But it's got to pass. That's well, we have thing. the authority. We, to pass. we have we, the authority to not levy full millage every year. I understand, but this we also this also has to be passed by the voters. We have to That's make right. it tolerable to the voters. Correct. So, just saying, if I was a voter and I am, I'd say I'm looking at this and I say, oh, well, they're keeping the general budget the same, but they're taking a big expense out of the out of the general fund, a big expense, which is uh, emergency services. And they're putting it over here, and we're going to add on two percent on the emergency services, and the gen and the general ledger is going to stay the same, or the general budget is going to stay the same. So essentially, you're just asking for a two percent millage increase, which is for for something right now that's like a fifty percent increase. I can I can see a lot of resistance with that. I, mean, I don't know how the voters feel, but I I can see a lot of resistance. 
Thank how you. Are we sell that without, how are we going to sell that without taking something off of the general budget? Thank you for your comment. Uh, so we need to get this information. To, we need to approve this today. So Chair, you, can't, you can't approve this today. You can't do it. The, the public has been informed. The, knowledge, the, the motion would just be put together today. I, mean, you, I suppose you could do it, but I strongly recommend the chairman. Well, we're going to need another special meeting then I, to I approve the language. It be then Friday. The public needs to know. Chris needs to get it out in the paper. There needs to be some some kind of public forum that the people that there is that there's been no input from the public. I agree. I agree. So with the public. Again, I, I I appreciate the the chair's enthusiasm, but the kicker is is that we need to have a special meeting. Otherwise, we're not being transparent. We can't talk about it. We actually have to do it. And just my recommendation, Mr. Chair. Thank you. That's what I brought up last week. Uh, what's everyone's schedule December 1st? What day is that, Mr. Chair? Sunday. December 1st. What day? Friday. Friday. Friday at 10 o'clock would be good because it gives everybody a chance to, to know about it before. Okay. Uh, Michelle, are you available Friday 10 o'clock for a special meeting to approve this language? I'm not here. I would have to have one of my staff sit in because two of us will be at uh, Train the Trainer for elections for 2024. So. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, can you, sure. one second, Darlene, can you get with the clerk to get the proper language? Actually, uh, I'm, I'm Mr. Chair, I'm scheduled for a meeting I mentioned quite a while ago down in, uh, in the East Lansing uh, on the wake board situation on uh, on the lakes okay I've already, paid, I've already prepaid that sure is there can we do it the day before thursday been having so many special meetings like i don't know if that's really the last day of deer season <laughs> what time do you come out of the woods rex i can be here at 10 o'clock in the morning okay thursday at 10 a.m i can do that Anyway, Mr. Chair, I was about to say this would give time for this to be reviewed by equalization director yeah. and get more of the wording in order. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to approve the, you know, for our discussion, we can't vote on it, but for Darlene or Rex, I know has been working on this to get the language for 2%. To move forward, is that agreement? Yeah, my recommendation too is since Chris is here today to make sure Chris gets a copy of the of the proposed notice request before she sure we put in the paper, important for the public record. And then I also would like to put on for Thursday because I could have more than one at a special meeting. Um, the treasurer's information to be voted on also. She discussed it today. We could vote on that Thursday too. We can do that after we approve the budget. We have lots of time. Okay. And that gives us time to thoroughly review everything and make sure all our ducks are sure. in order. Let's do our extra recommendation. Okay. I would have to say that I agree. I think both of them are very confusing topics that you guys probably want a lot more time to have that information and look at. Um, and I know then that would give more time um, for each of you to to speak with Rebecca a little bit more, okay, um, to fully understand <coughs> where the money's at. I like um, her thoughts, <laughs> right? Because this is her her taxes, her correct. Yeah. And, I, and I think too, I I feel like I'm being redundant, and probably am. But the kicker is, it's important for Rebecca's information to get out to the public, especially especially a separate piece. And I think it deserves deserves uh, attention just on this specific matter during during a board meeting. Is it is a big deal. She's proposing some really big stuff, and it's going to really help her budget. And I appreciate her time and attention. Thank you. Are, are we going to have two special meetings then? Or Just one. Just one to cover the at two ten a.m. regarding the two percent millage. Just to do the millage. Just, Just to do the millage. Two percent. It's the only thing going to be on the. Safety millage. Yep. Yep. Okay. Public safety. Is there any public comment? With that being said, number nine, adjournment. Second, all in favor? Aye.